and welcome to this installment of Harmon Town. I know you're so upset that you're not listening to Jeff Davis right now. He couldn't be here. I will be guest comp trolling. Big shoes to fill. My name is Brandon Johnson. We are so glad to see you again. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mr. Spencer Crittenton, the Dungeon Master, King of All Kings, fresh from Martin Luther King Day celebration. He's still drunk. Yeah. Welcome the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. What can I say? Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, rap, yeah, rap. Rapping to the beat isn't easy. George didn't fuck Wheezy. Without some effort, he had to put it in, and he had to get up in the morning, go to the gym, and say, I want to rap today. I got to put my effort in and make it my way. I'm... I'm going to rap at the top of the show. It's just a thing I do so you know. Got to get the energy up. Got to keep me on my toes so the show is good. What's up? What's up? Yo. 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 Rap. Yo. Rap. Yo. Rap. Yo. Rap. R to the A to the P. That spells rap. At least to me. It's a word that means to rap. Rap, rap, <laughs> rapping, rapping. Everybody's rapping. Yo, rapping. Yo, rapping. R A P P I N. Gonna spell it another time again. R A P P I N. Gonna fuck your mama like my name. Conjugation. Was... Yo. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Stop. All right. We can do that all day. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we like to. I like to rap at the top of the show. It's not because I think I'm good at rapping. It's not because I think it's a good way to start the show. It's because I want to be uh, flat-footed, as they say in D and D. Yeah, and you don't want to love be on, that dexterity. Uh, off guard. If I come up here knowing what I'm going to do, then it's it's death for everybody. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for paying five dollars. If you're watching it right now, thank you for nothing. If you're listening to it for free, thank you for your judgment. Thank you for judging me. I, I make a convenient target. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm not complaining about that. I'm 45. All I want to do is get out. I just want to get out. <laughs> I watched uh, The Post. It's bad. It's a bad movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg is no longer a good director. I don't know... When he was good last. Right. I know he was good for a good long time and that he deserves all of the credit in the world for being a wonderful, wonderful director who did such things as, for instance, uh, adapting a book about sharks into uh, anything with empathy. It was neat. He would add a couple shots in it. Like, uh, oh, it's a, there's a shark in the water, but uh, this guy loves his kid. T terrific. Like, we, we built an empire on this. Okay, I watched The Post. You know, you suck. It's a bad movie. It's terrible. Performances? Performances, bad. Director's fault. Good actors. Gotta be the director's fault. I don't, it's like, awful. Uh, Tom Hanks is acting like he's doing dinner theater. He's doing a character. I don't know what's happening in that movie. I, I it, it looks like an impression. It looks like a, a crazy person showed up on your doorstep um, having seen five minutes of All the President's Men, and he's just, like, outside your house, like, kicking at the door. It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible movie, and if you like it, you're stupid. Wow. And uh, if you nominated it for an award, you're dumb and you don't deserve that vote. You got your uh, you got your vote wrong. You you cheated someone out of it. Uh, it's a dumb movie. It's terrible. I couldn't finish watching it. It's awful. What's next? Florida Project ripped off. Totally snubbed. Fucking what? How, what? You're using kids. Kids are fucking monsters. They're animals. It's like directing cats. You get a performance out of kids. You're automatically nominated for best director. Period. It's not. It's not nominated. I don't understand. I don't get you anymore. You're an academy. You have one job. Uh. What? What else was nominated? Uh. Get Out? Did you finally see Get Out? Get Out, I enjoyed very much. Yes! I saw it. I'm not <laughs> racist. I saw it. I liked it. Call, it. Call Me By Your Name. Um, 
All right, here's the thing, kids. Uh-oh. I, I don't, like, oh. All right, look, let's, let's, let's just look at it this way. Like, 2000, whatever this is, it, it wasn't a year for storytelling. I get it. Like, 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 like I don't see it. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like, apparently movies are just about hanging out. And I, 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 that, that's fine. I kind of liked Call, call, call me by your name, just because like it, 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 you can tell the director's good. I, 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 I three hours f- to show me that. I don't, I don't. I don't uh, all right, just look. You know what? Fine. You know, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Beautiful movie, though. I just want to shit on Spielberg's head and go. You should know better. You, you like, 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 fuck you. What, what, what is your camera fucking like? Like, what? Why, why did you lay down track for a shot in a restaurant? Why would you use credence in a fucking Vietnam scene? We, are, are you dead? <laughs> Stop it! Not everybody goes to work every day. Yeah, well, then don't go to work at all! <laughs> all I want is to get out! <laughs> And there are people that have so much money that could have been out decades ago, and they just hang out making shit. And I'm like, you're mocking me. I want to die. I just want to draw the blanket of retirement over my body. I need one thing, $150 million. I've calculated it. Okay. That is if I put that in the bank, don't mock me for my <laughs> goals. I've done the math. How did you do the math? Was this with the Sklar brothers? $150 million. Uh, uh, I've, d- I've crunched the numbers. That means that even if I spend $2 million a year, I can live another $75, million, uh, 75 years. That's my math. Um, yeah, that, good man. So you bought a cry. Thank you. you thank you. I know you're being sarcastic, but thank you. I'm sorry. What was Brandon saying? Yeah, I wasn't being sarcastic. Yes, you were. So I thought some it was of that money man. is a cryo chamber. Because 75 more years is ambitious. There, there's all this. Uh, there's all this inflation <laughs> stuff. I just. I'm not. I'm not mad at Spielberg. I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want beef. I want beef. I don't want Spielberg's podcast to start shooting. We're calling you out. Shooting over at me. It just look. I saw Stephen. I saw. I saw the shot <laughs> where Streep comes into the restaurant. She's meeting Tom Hanks for the first time. I saw. Why? Why did the camera go all the way to the right and then all the way to the left and then all the way? To the right? you, you, you're you're you've out of, you're out of your mind. You've lost your mind. It's a, it's a scene about two people having breakfast. You should have worked with the actors. Uh, Tom Hanks is is uh, he's gone off the rails. Uh, which is ironic because your camera is on fucking railroad tracks that have oh, been snap. that took three days to oh, bolt into the floor of a restaurant you probably put out of business or a four walled set that you created at, in Uganda because the the sound sounds more restauranty there. I, I like like pay attention to your actors. The guy's got cotton balls in his lips or something. He's doing like a weird impression of Tommy Lasorda. I don't I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what Meryl Streep's doing. I don't know what anyone in that movie's doing. Everyone's walking around these old sets with. Uh, Going like, oh, you got the byline, you got the thing. Like, there's, no, I don't understand it. it. It's a weird, weird, weird movie. And if anyone had any objectivity, they'd go, "What is happening? Why is this movie happening? I don't know why I'm supposed to be watching this. This is a weird movie." But we don't have any objectivity. We're just like, "Oh, this was designed to win an Oscar, so we're going to nominate it for an Oscar." It doesn't deserve an Oscar. You're fucking insane. It's a terrible movie. I shut it off after a half an hour. I can't stand it. I couldn't, I couldn't hear it over me jerking off. I had to masturbate during your movie to make me interested in it. It just got real Argo up in here. <laughs> you, uh, do you think it is Spielberg's attempt to make a Scorsese type of film? I think there may have been, there may have been some Scorsese uh, influences on the goals yes. of that movie. Because there would be like, the people would walk into a New York newspaper office or something, and the, 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 but there'd be a fire hydrant that would have a, a leak would spring, and then someone would go, oh, 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 and it got a Davida. And then, the, the, like, it was all like, everyone was lit weird with like, the, there'd be like a little girl going, like, extra, extra. Like, it was, it was, it was weird. I don't care though. It's, it's this is not my job. I don't care anymore. I just want out. If you're hearing the sound of my voice and you're like, "Oh, Dan, I, I don't like you," uh, join the club. I, I like like I I I I don't I don't want I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be talking to you. I don't want you listening to me. I don't want to have an yeah. opinion. I don't want my opinion to matter. I just want money. I just want enough money to get a fucking <sighs> like like break. Like if I had been born. With the amount of money that 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 normal people have when they're born, 
I would be. I would never have been doing this. I would be under a rock somewhere, minding my own business. I made myself out of dirt without permission. What else are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> okay, real quick though, where where not are real you? Real quick, fill real, time. Yeah. I don't. I have no show. I'm trying to like pump up like controversy. Um, do you? Where the fuck would you go? Where would I go? Where are you trying to escape to right now? Because I f- I know what you're talking about. You you got you got some um, into bed post success blues, which are real. It's totally real to be like super well fed and happy, and have lost the thing that made you run through the jungle. <laughs> so now you get depressed on some new shit. You know what I mean? It's like if you had had say like your appendix out and you'd worried about that for two months, and then they took it out and you weren't in pain anymore. You might have a rash that bothered you like your appendix used to because we're used to living in some sort of crazy fear, right? Right. So I'm following you. Where would you go to to escape you? Bed. Yeah. What? You don't even think like you're not going no like there's no desert. There's no another country like Amsterdam no. for no. two months. No, I like I like the United States. I like that when you take a shit, it's in a bucket of okay. water that makes the shit disappear. I like I like They have that in Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that's big in Japan. <laughs> Don't you dare high road me. <laughs> Can you brag about some dope shit we have? <laughs> no, I don't want to go to it. I, I assume, you know, when people talk about, oh, I love it in Norway or Amsterdam or whatever. I, you know, what? I, I got to assume, I think those people are lying, right? It's got to be better here than anywhere. Am I wrong? What do you think? It depends on what you're into. If you're into, like, kicking it at, like, two or three, you want Brazil, you want France. If you're into, like, safety when you walk home as drunk as you want, you want, like, Norway, Amsterdam. Like, you know, you, you can do a different kind of party all over the planet. All right, well, you make it sound like a not party. getting stabbed when you're walking home is like a menu item. Well, think about it like this. If you get drunk in New York or Chicago or Los Angeles and you leave, you leave a bar or you leave a club, like, you just made a mistake. You could get stabbed. But if you're in a foreign country, like the places where they're kind of decent. Right. Um, <laughs> but the place you just were is shitty, right? Or it's one of three places that is open. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Isn't I'm there saying, a trade-off? Yeah, the trade-off is you can get uh, you can get a little clarity in those places. But, Ta-da. but aren't you comfortable? <laughs> aren't you comfortable making the assumption that for everybody's like mocking us, that America's probably the best to to, to like like every, it's, we make an easy target. Where uh, it's like, oh, you guys suck. You, oh, you 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 don't want to be there. Your guns and your violence. Totally agreed. But we, we when we compare ourselves to other countries, and we go like, did you know in Sweden that you can leave your bike on the sidewalk and just uh, jerk off on it and like roll into the storm drain, and the storm drain will take you to the nearest hospital for free? Like, I, I, I you hear you hear these things, and I'm not saying they're not true, but I'm just assuming that that probably means that like there's got to be some trade off. Like maybe there their cable sucks. I don't know. But that's true. But the visit is the thing. The thing is to like sort of go someplace, look at things differently, get that perspective. You want me to fall into the trap where I use the only money I do have traveling around going like, oh, I like the Yukon. I like the, 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 the wheat patch. I like the, I like the turkey farm. I got to tell you that that's the route. When you had no money, you would, if you had like a thousand bucks, you'd spend 800 bucks on a trip. You would. And then you'd be like, fuck it, when I get back, I'll figure out how to manage this 200 bucks into another 800 bucks. But now you got cash, you got nervous and shit, so you stop taking risks. I feel you. No. Nah. But it's time to, like, seriously, like, maybe take some trips. Dream get life. Up. Dream life. Here it is. <laughs> Bed. <laughs> California King. Cody. Me. Comforter. The dogs, they're fine. We'll deal with them. It, it, forensic Files. Netflix, everything, all of it, everything available to, to watch. Baller. I'm going to complain about all of it. Spielberg, you heard me. Keep Beef. making shit. I'll keep fucking shooting it back in your face. What have you done? Uh, you barfed it on me. I'll barf it right back at you. I enjoy it. You enjoyed it. You didn't suffer during that movie. I could tell. I watched you five started of it. this. If you if you if you if 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 you if you were hurting while you made that movie, I'll give you a million dollars. <laughs> Uh, you were definitely happy. Uh, you were in a hammock. Um, the, 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 but I want to be in bed with Cody. Laptop, okay, for just, I want to learn Maya. I'm learning Maya right now, awesome. 3D modeling. And uh, uh, just watching things. And, I, and then I want to wake up the next morning 
and I, I don't want to have to go to work. I want to stay in bed with Cody, and then I want to stay in bed, and yeah. then go to sleep again, and then wake up the next day. I want to just keep doing that. I, I think w- you can. That's what I'm saying. I think you can. Well, I, God knows I've tried. <laughs> We're trying. Yeah. But I, I, I don't... Uh, but you can't like, like you, you live in a house and the house has a mortgage and then and then the water and the water's got it's got uh, the, the water comes from a place and they go like we need our money for the water and the, there's the there's dirt people they're like oh you have dirt you got to pay your dirt rent uh, is that the, the the dogs have chips in their brains have, how, they, how about they, garage? revolved out or the chips give the dog cancer i uh, like like they, 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 there's like iron outside your fence to keep people from getting in to spread their pore germs on you but the iron if you don't replace it it gets rusty i I, there's cameras and the camera's got to be upgraded and the stereo system is never enough you can't just listen to phil collins you can't just press play (laughs) and listen to fucking phil collins i was like everything costs two hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars four hundred thousand dollars and then the guy that tells you all this he costs 50 grand a month and your publicist whose job is to keep you less famous than you are it's just like just keep me out of the news, three grand a month. I got people paying people to pay people to pay people to count money. I don't care if I have. I just want to die. Yeah. Not really, literally die. I want to go to sleep. Yeah. I want to. Like, I want to hang out. You got those new money blues. And, and 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 I'm not complaining. Right. It sounds a lot like I am. It's not. It's not. It's a real thing. I'm only saying. During this time between 45 and 50, I'm going to spend the next five years working as hard as I can. I'm going to try to bring the kids quality entertainment. During that five years, Mr. Spielberg, could you please stop (laughs) making films or actively start making them? This difference you've split is offensive. (laughs) I can tell you weren't on set. It shows. I can tell, baby. I'm psychic. I've got Hackdar. I know when you weren't on set. <sighs> and to, for it to just be shipped in a pneumatic tube from your fucking asshole to the academy fucking is bullshit. Because if you shot that on an iPhone and you were like Dominican and were like, I made a movie about the Washington Post, they'd be like, so? He'd be like, Dan, I got a lawn and I got water, and there's a rusty fence, and I got a house I got to pay for, and I got all this other shit, too. Yeah. Well, I'm, no, I, I'm sure, yeah, he's got a small army. He's got, he's got to pay for the laser dots you can see all over my head right now. <laughs> uh, those, aren't, those, aren't, those aren't cheap. I, 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 uh, I, I like Get Out. Oh, good. 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 What did Oscar you like good about it? And- no, all right. Let's not start. What'd you like about it? It was great. I love that it was the I love the guy that gets got out. That sounds real. <laughs> I love it when the guy got out. Spoilers. Hilarious. Hilarious. <sighs> but did the guy truly get out? Well, don't. I mean, you know, I I I I, I didn't see the movie. Well, I don't know what happens. Spoiler alert! It's America. <laughs> I liked. Uh, any I, Tanya? I liked I, Tanya. Did I, Tanya get uh, nominated for anything? I don't think so. See? It's no country only for so many old rooms. Harbins. I, I don't, I don't, I, I like, I'll, I'll bother to watch these young people's movies. I'll go like, oh, I like that. The, well, a Florida Project. Oh, well, well you know, I don't, well, it's got to be hard to direct a bunch of fucking kids running around. Willem Dafoe, you add him to, like, well, just give the person a director. What? It's sure. a, the, obviously, that's a hard movie to direct. Yeah. And it was I mean, hot. Just a nomination. Yeah. Well, so, no, Ebbing? no, Any no, Ebb- no nomination. Well, come on, you're being silly then. Any love for Ebbing at all? E- what? The billboards, three billboards outside oh. of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, boy. <sighs> you know, no. Okay. No. Okay. I watched it. I like all the actors. I yep. don't, look, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was trite. I thought it was trite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Spencer got those booze. Spencer, you loved it. Oh, boy. I couldn't get enough. <laughs> those performances. I thought there could have been two billboards. Those billboards? Oh, no, I think there could have been five. Easy. I thought, you know what? Here we go. 
I don't like that f- fucking Netflix show about the end of the fucking world. I don't, I don't know anything about that show, and I hate it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't I like don't. the look in that guy's eye. I don't like anything. Name a thing. Try to find something I like. I don't like anything. Olives. I, ice cream has its moments. I'm. T- Minecraft. Minecraft is okay. Kettle one. <laughs> Kettle one solid. Come on. I was I was talking about movies. Oh I mean, yeah yeah. Uh, Robocop. What about the new season of Black Mirror? I haven't seen it. What are you? What, That's the thing. When something threatens to be good, I don't watch it. I haven't watched Atlanta yet. I haven't watched Black Mirror. You haven't watched Atlanta yet? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm racist. Oh. I'm racist. I'm racist. You deserve everything that happens to you. <laughs> That show would make you so happy. You would love it for so many reasons. It's right up your alley. You don't would love be, that yeah, show. Yeah, I don't want to be happy. And also, don't wait because I because I don't know that you know season three and fours and fives are going to be as good as one and two. Oh no! Oh god! You'll be mad. You'll be like, damn! Why I does I start to like the show? It's already shitty. been going five seasons. It's already one. What, what am I going to do? Go? Oh, this show's good. And everyone's going to go. Oh, Dan likes that show. It doesn't matter. Like, what, what? So you get the enjoyment of the show, and then what happens? I'm trying to tell you to help you stay in bed. <sighs> Yeah, that's Watch some Atlanta. In stay in bed. Forensic Files. The Big Sick. I haven't seen Dan it. Dan loves it. I haven't seen it. He loves it. I haven't watched it. I won't watch it. <laughs> no, I don't I don't want to I don't want to stand the chance of anybody making me feel good. I want to I want to I want to drown in hatred. We'll just focus on the part where she gets sick. Yeah, you can watch that over <laughs> and over. Fast forward to the uh I, I bet I bet I bet she gets sick uh, 30 minutes in. I just want to see the sick parts. I'm really here just for the sick parts. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good you guys confronted me on this. It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not actively exposing myself to things that I have reason to believe will be good. So why am I complaining about things that I, I just thought the post would be good. And and Stephen, can I call you Stephen? <laughs> I don't think he'd like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gonna be ugly in these streets. <laughs> All right, <laughs> talking shit from birth. You can watch the big sick on Pornhub. That's what I heard. It's true, you guys. Thank you, Brandon Johnson, for subbing in for Jeff Davis. Yeah. I do the best I can. It's a very, very hard job, um, but I'm so, so psyched to be here. Thanks, man. I'm still unsure of whether or not I want, you know, like, do we want the people in the house to be uh, laughing and clapping or? um, Yeah. No. No. I, well, you don't have to. You I mean, can have who, your own opinion. Right, exactly. Who am I? <laughs> just, just subbing right now. I probably should just wait my turn. It <laughs> could, it, you're, 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 okay. Well, I'm going to start my movie. Well, the movie's going to start in uh, Vietnam. Well, what should we? What music should we use? I could whip up. A, I could whip up a nice Vietnam uh, score for you. No, credence. Well, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that song about I'm running through you. the jungle? Will you stop it? <laughs> stop it. Credence, man. Um, we could always uh, we could always shift gears and maybe and bring up our guest. Oh, do, do is he here? He That's what here. I heard. Yeah. yeah, that is the rumor. <sighs> All right. Well, maybe I've rubbed you the wrong way tonight. Who? Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> or is that a song title? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get on everybody's good side, and uh, you know, maybe I don't have the uh, the personality or the reputation for that. So why don't I bring up uh, our guest? Uh, is he really here? Is he really John, here? John Mayer is here. Let's bring up John Mayer. What? Oh, a very special Harmon Town. Yo, 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 John Mayer coming to the stage. John Mayer. All the fucking rage, blues, rock, pop, soul, fuck your mama on a donut roll. Donuts don't have rolls, fuck your mama in a hole. I, uh, I'm getting nervous because you're a famous lyricist. Yo, John Mayer. He's here. John Mayer's here. Let's talk to John Mayer. Oh, yeah. I want to okay. be the guy. I want to be the guy who hears... The other rapper rap, and then like quickly associates other words to shout out. Yeah, as an answer to it. That's the hardest part. I try to do that every night. Yeah, that's what it's I like. so hard. Sometimes I'm like MC Nubs, and it's like the best I could pull out. It's not easy. Yeah, and there's so many rap songs that don't have that. You can go back in time and just add it to all the other songs that are there. <laughs> and people do. Yeah, and re-release them. Yeah, 
I do it. I think that I think that we put out a glass for you <laughs> with a lemon wedge. I got this from my hotel room. All right. So what is that? What you got there? It's a kombucha. Oh, nice. Do you like that? I, I haven't yeah. had a type I've liked so far, but I'm still open to it. I quit drinking, and so I find that this takes the place of a curiously strange, bubbly drink that I'm right. not sure if I like. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's it's perfect for that. Each sip just creates more curiosity as to what the fuck I'm drinking this. <laughs> Can I swear? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do. Yeah. We prefer it. Thank you. Sometimes I'll be laying in bed and I'll hear it. And I'll be like, what is it? And I'll turn over and it's my kombucha bottle where the cap wasn't <laughs> totally on and it scares me. It emits like a. Yeah, the carbonation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it ferments. Right? Over time. Over time. Yeah. It gets hot. And it screams. Yeah. What is there? Uh, uh, I, I started. I started washing a bottle out in my sink that's like a drinking bottle, and I put like I have a thing on my sink that emits boiling water, mm -hmm. and so I fill the thing with boiling water because I don't I'm like oh I'm getting an end run around washing things, and I fill the cup with the with boiling water, <laughs> and I seal it shut, and then I shake it, and it's got boiling water in it, and then when I unscrew it, how come it goes? <laughs> Right. What happened in that short period of time? What, what, what is it? It was already hot water. But yeah. the air wasn't what is, hot. What is it, Spencer? What's what's is it steam? I don't understand. It's sizzling like it sounded like you were ma like making the sound like when you open a, a bottle of soda kind of hiss. Yeah, it's like just a little one though. It's mm. and we're like, what is that? What did you? What were you keeping from me? Yeah, it's just got to be like pressurized somehow. I would guess. The I don't air. know. When you poured it in there, the air was not warm. It probably yeah. has nothing to do with me shaking it. It's probably just hot water steaming already. <laughs> you, you seal it up. It didn't matter what I did. And then I... You, you It'd be steam. Steam pressure. It's a right. platonic engine. Yeah. yeah. I shaking, think that's it. And that's how trains are made. Right. That's, that's, that's how trains work. That's how trains work. <laughs> you know. John Mayer... Uh, <laughs> we just met today. Yeah. Uh, Seven-time uh, Grammy winner. Whoa. Uh, looked it up. Uh... <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, good host. Good host. Good interviewer. Yeah. How did we meet? Tell. Let's tell the story. We, we just met, met an uh, hour I'm, ago. I'm a, I'm a hu we met like six hours ago. I'm a huge fan of Rick and Morty, like everyone else is. And oh, yeah. I tend to dive deep when I like something. Um, you don't want to be the friend in my life who likes something and then turns me onto it because I will <laughs> swiftly just railroad you with my being into it 20 times more than you yeah. are within a short period of time. And I did that and I became a big fan. And then I reached out to somebody from your show or what I usually do is I just make such a big whoop on social media. You know, I tend to sort of manifest my desires by way of Twitter and just creating a stir. And one of your producers reached out, I think. I, uh -huh. I, uh, and um was that Steve Levy? I think it was Mike. Uh, Mike? Sure. Oh, Mike Mandel. Mike Mandel. Yeah. McMahon. Mike, Mike McMahon. Oh, Mike McMahon. Yeah. A whole lot of mics sense. going on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all I need is one mic. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's a Nas reference. <laughs> Nas, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. Thanks. Well done. Uh, thanks. Um, well done. And, uh, and then I met a really sweet guy on, on your crew who's one of the artists. His name is Corey. Cor Corey. Never met him. Yep. He invited me to the taping of the season three DVD commentary. And I came, availed myself to actually sitting in the room and talking on a DVD with you guys. Here's the fun part. It's like I'm already aware that, that I'm behind the eight ball when it comes to my name. And certain people enjoy Rick and Morty because of the fact it does not contain any John Mayer elements in it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Certain things are just have their strength from me not being involved in it in any way. <laughs> And I like to close that gap, and there I was, and I, I wasn't on the first I wasn't on the first commentary that they did to, today, but I was on what ended up what will end up being the very first episode yeah. on the commentary in the sequence of which makes me look even nervier than I already am. But we got to talking, and I think I found a certain familiarity in both your your uh, intelligence and your unhappiness. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. I mean, it really is true. I had a great day today because I met John Mayer. Thank you. I, like, like, I, and I was like, I'm not miserable, but like, I don't get to complain yeah. about the things that I have to complain about to anybody but John Mayer. Bring him, bring him, <laughs> bring him. Well, no, he was like, we no, were we like were... standing in a kitchenette eating pepperoni pizza, talking about how uh, hard Google autofill can be. Yeah, I was saying that. <laughs> how merciless. Well, I don't know that anybody. <laughs> 
<laughs> searches. Like, does anybody go just Google search a celebrity name to find out what's going on? If it's un unless you're the celebrity, like, does Google? Is anybody here like like oh, what's going on with Gaga? And just oh yeah, like, throw in Lady Gaga into yeah. The like it's search? been two years, really? I think. What's happening? Yeah. What makes that kind of curious? Oh, really? You're just to catch up? Sometimes. When you're a fan, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of a ton of people, so I, I catch up. I mean, I was looking at like. Uh, Aerobics uh, icons from the '80s before I got here. <laughs> so. Yeah, but that's not by name. Oh, yeah, I guess so. That's a little bit yeah. like a where are they now? Like thing. Cynthia Carolick. <laughs> well, you know, it's like Denise Austin. Yeah, sure. Mm. Uh -huh. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Yeah. yeah. My mother, my mother used to have Jane Fonda. The Jane Fonda LP. You fall down those rabbit holes. Yeah. That's how I discovered the Jacksons. No. Because shit. can you feel it? Oh. Was the song for the Jane Fonda. And she would say, one vertebrae at a time. Lift it up, one vertebrae. Can you feel it? Boom, boom, can you feel it? And my mother was there. <laughs> <laughs> Funny way to get indoctrinated into the love of the Jacksons. I, one uh, vertebrae at a time. You're slightly younger than me, but I, I came of pubescence in, in the, at the height of the aerobics uh, movement. And uh, that was my girlfriend shifting uncomfortably. Uh, is that to suggest that you, it, it served a purpose beyond uh, aerobic? Yeah, I wasn't the most fit 13-year-old uh, boy uh, in the world, and yet I watched a lot watch of uh, syndicated uh, aerobics programs. Sometimes I get upset when I watch porn that I can see everything. I yeah. remember not seeing everything and fighting with my eyes. For well, do you know underneath. that there's a, I mean... You're talking one about thing the I, found, years. I started typing in yeah. fully clothed, or even just bra ads and stuff. Like wanting to see beyond things is very erotic. Or wanting to, it could be a creepier thing where you want to see what you see every day, and you want to sexualize that instead Correct. of Correct. someone who's just available. I got, I can get, uh, I can get with that. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't judge it either way. But I, I, yeah, I. I've I've found myself like typing in like there I found and I found out there's an abbreviation it's a uh, it's a genre of porn it's uh, say it with us C, C F N F N N N M clothed, clothed female, female yeah. nude naked male. male that's yeah. what it is I don't know why the guy has to be naked that's not on my because it's humiliating well he doesn't seem humiliated I don't think it's no he's I into think, it I think it, I think it's exactly to your point it has this sense of um, extreme ease the idea that well it really it really is the manifestation of what you see a lot going on in the news right now I, apparently that's how most people want to work in the office it's just <laughs> nothing on yeah i mean well it's, yeah what's I, going I, on I, the news right now well it seems to be a lot of that that kind of sexualization of the idea that i'm going to turn what seems to be a very matter of fact moment into something sexual which right. i think is w where the root of c Close, uh, you, have, you have to work it out. It's like yeah, the you really do every time. It's a Roy G. Biv, really. <laughs> right. Roy, we could call it Roy G. Biv. Yeah, yeah I, I most of the stuff in my in that folder that I hope no one finds it it, it really <laughs> resembles things that don't they don't are hardly recognizable as as porn. I understand. I'm, I, I'm into the sleight of hand of it as well. No pun. I enjoy I enjoy the subtle like the, the Little game of subtlety. <laughs> I friggin' love it. I friggin' love it. All right. Well, let's pull back out to the to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fame, <laughs> uh, the difficulty with it. I I was there was a certain point where it's like you got to come on the podcast and we got to have this conversation because why? I don't know. Because I'm a narcissist and I don't want to continue to have it privately because I, I might accidentally make a front. I I I just want I, like but but it was like it. it <laughs> I, and, and we were both like, as long as we don't take a woe is me stance, it right. would be really funny to talk about like how. <laughs> I think I think there's a lot to work with in it, as your therapist might say. There's a lot to work with. You follow do, that. Thought. Do you do you actively uh, are you in therapy? Yes. How long have you been in therapy? I've been in therapy for years, but the, my current relationship of man versus therapist has been since like 2009. Mm. Um, and I don't really think about it. In the, to in the overall machinations of fame the way you would normally think about it. I don't, I don't really have that ad hoc relationship anymore with the world. Like, I am subject, thing I do is famous. I think I've sort of particleized it in a good way, like over time with 
kind of going up and down so many times or changing my name and so, or musically changing my name. I feel like I carry like six musical passports. Uh -huh. And like the perfect backdrop for this is that as we speak, like the Grammy after parties are taking place in New York City and I'm not there. And that's something, that's, that's a thing. That's a right. thing. I put a record out this year. I made a record and thought that when I was making it, there's, there's no way this can't hit. And that's what you're supposed to think when you make something. Don't you think that when you're making something every time that it's, it's going to hit? Yeah, but I want to make sure that we can connect our... Uh, because not being a musician, I just want to make sure that we understand what we're talking about because like, me putting something out uh, versus you putting something out can be a totally different thing. Yeah. Um, but what, so uh, not being at the Grammy after parties in New York means very carefully not invited didn't attend or uh did not get nominated mm -hmm. uh didn't didn't break through with my record and i find that actually like i used to find it really sad and now i find it really empowering somehow or another i feel like it like drives me pretty hard um the idea you know. that at least that's taken off the table not to put words in your mouth, but this is where I'm trying to find a parallel, like stop me when I diverge. I'm greedy you. and I want to go to every party. Right. I'm greedy. I want everything, every possible way I can have it. I want both obscurity and also great, great mainstream success. Yes. Okay. I want the power Got that it. obscurity has, but I want the adulation that mainstream success has. And I find myself bouncing back and forth between those two needs, always a little bit upset in the middle of those two things. You take the obscurity yep. a little personally. Makes sense. If, so, if you're not nominated for this or this didn't hit that or this charts, as much as you know as an intellectual person that these, these metrics mean nothing, you know you're supposed to know that, your therapist knows it, you've arrived at all these things, you're, you're a grown man, you get all that stuff, but... And then it gets visceral because you're on Instagram. And then... And then something happens that triggers you. You go, oh, people don't like me. I'm not approved of. I, 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 I'm not. And Correct. you're like, I don't, need, I don't need that goal. I don't need that goal. This is a great opportunity for me to now uh, not be liked. Now, if you want, exact, but if you want insight into the world and how the world must work, look at what I have. And now I metabolize success so fast. And I know this about myself. I can't hold on to it. But I have a lot of it that I could point to if I needed to. I'm sure it's always at work, whether I realize it or not. I'm sure the defense mechanisms of great success are always humming along even if I can't hear it. And then I say to myself, if I feel this way, if I feel a little beat down today by this, by this thing, imagine how someone who is 22 feels, who doesn't have anything to their name, that must make them like a straw house in the wind of that stuff. Because you grow proof. up in an environment where they need the yeah. likes and the and the yeah. And Imagine I, that. Like my heart breaks for that. Like I did a I I did this. Uh, I sat in in the in the interim between Craig Ferguson and James Corden doing Late Late Show. I did a guest host thing for three days. I I did Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I literally cried on Thursday night. I cr it made me cry because the question and this might. A sort of overlap into television was, and I asked one simple question of the world. Is it any good? Was I good? That was the question. Was I good? The answer told over Twitter just kept prolonging the, I mean, it just kept prolonging the question. I couldn't find the answer and it drove me crazy. Now, you've got the East Coast airtime and you've got the West Coast airtime. So you do actually two laps around every broadcast yeah. mm. you do the east coast live tweet and you read it and every answer just gets further away from you as you keep reading and it drove me mad because i couldn't answer the question then i realized retroactively this is what the friends i've had the girls i've tried to love forever like this is what people in this industry have to deal with is this ever escaping answer to this simplest of questions which is did anybody like that yeah. Yeah. How That's am I the driving? only question. Am I a good primate? Did I do good? Are you ever going to kick me out? Will you just set me up in a, in a branch of this tree where I can chill? I, I like, I, I, yeah. Like, yep. like, like, because you get early, early encouragement for doing special things. Yes. And 
before you realize that special things are special because they're not normal and you 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 eventually enter a world where you realize that those special things they're not that special you're just you're just being normal like like they're not that special they're not so special that you can be an asshole they're not so special that someone else isn't better at it like there's that. they're not so special that it's definitive at all they're just special enough that your mom says i love you when you do it and it might be sewing a fucking seam. It might be your eyesight is better than 2020. Mm. It might be jumping over a bush. Uh, it might be catching a ball. It, it, for me, it was reading and writing. I, I was reading and I was writing and I was reading and I was writing. And like, I, it, it's like you, you, you start you're just like like you're swallowing this thread and you're, you're just going along it and you're going um and it's all too late when you go i don't i don't want approval anymore i want safety i want comfort mm. and then you look around and go oh i don't have as much safety and comfort as someone who whose mom patted them on the head for being a mailman <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I would amend that a little bit for me because I have... By the way, I yeah. lost what I was trying to say no, in the I middle and it. started riffing and I totally... The, it all fell apart. I tracked it, it the whole time. That's the scary. You're so bright. You can even <laughs> I wasn't fishing for that, John Mayer. You're so bright. You can even articulate stuff you, you're not even thinking Don't about. Don't say my mind is a wonderland. I won't let I you say it. I won't have it. I won't have it. You're not an expert on it, and if no. you say it, it won't no, be a no. quote that I can take to the, my grave. <laughs> uh, Don't say my mind is I a wonderland. I won't. I won't. I won't sing it to you. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> but I have. I have. I have fans. I have music fans. You know, and 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 songs um, are repeatable. People live inside them forever. So I have that part of it, and I feel stable there. However, most of my childhood upbringing, I've decided it's redacted, but. Part of the way that I got out of Fairfield, Connecticut, was by weaponizing my ability to focus on things and write songs and play guitar and get better. Getting better was what I did to defeat monsters. That's how I beat monsters. Literally defeated monsters by getting better. I got hit in the arm by the bully. I wouldn't hit back. I would say to myself, you'll see the day you want to buy tickets to my show and I won't let you. Right, of course, to say nothing of the fact that's impossible commercially, but you know what I'm saying. And then you get someone says you can't do it, and you say, and you go silent. You know, I learned how to go deadly silent. I don't act out. I just go deadly silent and then go off in a room and do something, and it works. But now I'm 40, and I think I've driven this pattern into my life yeah. where every time I feel lonely, every time I feel like I don't have enough to keep me company, literally to keep me company, mm -hmm. I'll just fucking build another, I'll just build another weapon. And the weapon is the music, and that's great, but over time, and I think this is where we connect on this, is like, nobody tells you when to stop punching. You don't, you, ha you literally have no concept of what the finish line is because no one, ha no one really knows what it is. A therapist will, will tell you, my therapist told me, I'm still <laughs> catching up to it. She said, You've, you're covered in weapons, you know, mm -hmm. and armor. And, you know, you just, you're just gonna have to let it go. It's not doing anything for anybody. Yeah. It's there for a fine reason, but you gotta let it go. But, 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 um, I, I get the sense from you that, like, I mean, seven Grammys, you're John Mayer, whatever, man. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> One day I, I'm just going to get to John, but I uh, understand we're at first name, last name. The, uh, <laughs> like, I, I'm, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is, as a, like, I, there's a, it sounds like you're at least willing to admit that you're you're scrolling through comments and you're looking for you may not be looking for validation there but you're like yes. it's like a ticker and I'm very curious just in your inner clockwork like it, it, it when someone tries to say someone tries to take a shot at me they can say you're fat and I'm like yeah I mean that just means I'm twice as talented as I'd have to be if I was thin. Um, they say you're untalented, and I'm like, 
it doesn't. Yeah, it goes it's like, I'm, I'm like I want to say to the kid like like that is that is where Batman's chest plate is. Like right. you don't right. like like are you kidding me? You right. heard my name because I like this is what I do. Like I I I, I cannot be killed there. Right. You you could you could you could dynamite that chest plate and there wouldn't be a heart behind it mm -hmm. to 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 kill. But then there's this, but it's like, there's other shit that fucks you up, right? And it's weird because like someone could call you untalented and you could know it and it's like, like and, and go like, oh, I, I don't, I'm not worried about being untalented. Yeah. I'm John Mayer. Uh, but I, 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 what I'm hearing you say is that there, there is shit that it's like. Because I won't stay still. So because I don't like a unanimous vote. I don't like unanimous votes. It took me 40 years to realize I don't like golf claps. I don't like agreed upon 100% approval. For some reason, things go invisible. It's not very punk rock. They just go invisible in my Your head. Your nightmare is obscurity. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts to be part of the woodwork. Uh, like it, 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 my night. My nightmare. I'm not saying is, you are. Um, I'm saying that's your nightmare. Not obscurity. No, I like obscurity if there's some depth to it. My nightmare is being placed off to the side where everybody goes... Got it. He's indexed, labeled, Got barcoded, it, right. RF labeled. We know who he is. Off you go. That, that to me, I can't, it, I feel like I disappear. And so what I purposefully have done, I think now I can look back on it with some clarity, is diversify so that things can never get that way. I don't know why I do it that way. So the only reason, now if I went and played a show and came, came back, you're right. Nobody could say that I didn't know how to play the guitar. But it's the fact that I'm trying to diversify into situations that are so foreign. Like, how do people feel about me hosting a talk show? You know, I'm going into such enemy territory that I the think- The Dave Chappelle moments. Yeah, the stuff with Dave Chappelle, going off and doing a tour with Dave. I, I, you know, after enough times of getting thrown in jail, you have to say to yourself, there must be something about the clothes in here that I like. There must be <laughs> something in here that I like. I mean, I'm taking that look at myself at 40. Like, take a look at the patterns. When things go well for you, you tend, it's like your hand disappears. And you start going, where am I? And you do these things as markers to feel as if you matter in the world because you're trying to Houdini into new stuff. Is it an oversimplification to say, um, okay, our families, God bless them. They let's not call them good people, bad people. Let's not blame them for anything. They weren't filling the, uh, they weren't paying off the credit card bill. Maybe they gave birth to people with bigger needs that they could fill. But in any case, everybody that I talk to, that in our line of work in general, they seem to come back around to their early memories of the parents weren't filling the the the, the bucket. And then company would come over and all of my friends were the kids that would run out in their pajamas and they would they would make an ass of themselves and they just loved it's is it attention is it, is it an oversimplification to say that what you're talking about is that attention is needed i'll take you one deeper distinction i need distinction but distinction is defined by strangers or not? Because it's it seems like you could be in your garage knowing you're distinct. You're, you have trophies and, and the ego and the self-confidence to know. You could sit on a desert island and know that you're better, that you could win a guitar contest. That I, could, that I, I always tell people, like, when they say, ask about like, uh, empirical talent level, I'm like, if, I, if this were tennis, I don't know the ranking, but I would definitely beat the Open. I know, like, I can, like, that's as far as I can understand it, is that I'd be at the U.S. Open. I don't know where I'd come in. I don't know if I'd, if I'd place. I don't know if that's a tennis race. And so you know that. So what's that distinction? That that's what you're talking about, being distinct, is that... Well, I got it now. I mean, I, when I was a kid, that's what I wanted. And that's, I mean, the thing about music is, and I guess the same thing with animating, not trying to, like, put it in your wheelhouse too much. I know you're not an animator. Well, but I'm certainly taking a lot of liberties comparing us, so you can do whatever you yeah, want. I, um, <laughs> I, you, you're, for music... You can, you can hear yourself do the thing. I mean, for me, it, it came a lot. It, it resembled very much the sort of um, alter ego, the superhero thing. Training in your room. You'll see. I mean, I, I have a great, great, great sense memory of tonight being uh, like everyone's at this party. And I was told maybe there'd be room in the Jetta. So yeah. was, Ryan has a Jetta. Yeah. And then Ryan said, sorry, I got no more seats in the Jetta. And I'm like, cool, cool. And I know right now that everybody's at the party, and I imagine if I weren't sitting here talking to you, I would be in my bathroom playing a guitar pretending I was at the party. Because I like it. There's something about it I like. I related in the 80s to Teen Wolf. 
differentiation, distinction. He's the only one, except his dad, you know, if we're getting into Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 no. I, I want to be honest to talk and say what I don't quite get. I want to go, I want to go back yeah. over that, the, the Jetta metaphor. That didn't happen tonight. You're talking about a, remember, I, I'm saying. Like, yeah, no, but, 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 I'm but not you a, would, I'm but not the, a, I'm not a man of distinction this evening. The, I mean, uh, the, a great spot. the image of you in the bathroom by yourself mm -hmm. when you're not at the party playing guitar, that's an important, because, I don't know, like, like, I can't, you know, maybe you're five years younger than me, so I don't know, like, it, it, it shit, a lot of shit can change in a couple years, but, and I know that I was prolific, I know that I would fucking write for no reason, I remember that, but, like, I look at musicians because it just looks, you're, you, it involves a piece of lumber and, mm -hmm. like, lessons and things, and, like, uh, when you say that you would really do it by yourself, um, I'm so curious about that because are you searching for something when you do it by yourself? When you, when you, uh, do, do you, do you plunk out little melodies yeah. and like, yeah, you, you do it. I do it to make sure that it's still there. If you could fly. Okay. Why, why in the comic books? And this is a new thought. Is Superman occasionally not just levitating a little bit? <laughs> if you were Superman, wouldn't you figure out a way to just like, just but just like a like in a person be like, Superman, can you please not do that? I'm trying to talk to you. Like maybe it's a thing he does when he's bored with a story, just goes up a foot and a half. And for me, I feel like if I'm able, if I was told by myself and others that I'm able to perform this act, I'm I'm I have a system inside of me that does it. I need to do it every once in a while to see the system at work so I can remember, oh, the reason that I'm in this whole affair is because of that. And that always sort of brings me back. I mean, we're talking about the impetus for, an, for, for, for doing this with your hand. Pick a note, pick a place. It's total freedom. Play it, hear yourself play it. Some, you, can play it uh, you can sit down and play guitar from a lot of different angles. Some of it can be like, fuck you. Although I don't do that very often because I'm very blessed. But, Sometimes, sometimes I get in and I, I might, um, if I were sitting in my hotel room tonight, I might have made a little smirk in the mirror and pretended <laughs> I was at whatever <laughs> venue the Grammys are at tonight. I don't know, but I think to stay in touch with that is what keeps you healthy and writing great music that you desperately want people to hear, you know? Yeah. Does doing your music live also sort of keep those demons at bay? Oh, yeah. And it taught me how to make records. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, hard to argue with thousands of people if you're feeling shitty that day, yeah. it sort of helps to be doing it live, right? So that's why people stay on tour. They okay. don't like, you know, they don't like traveling. Interesting. I have, and the, so I'll tell you a little bit about my life. Recently, like, I came off tour after a full year of touring, and I decided no tour for a minute, no plans for a minute, figure it out, build a life, you know? And 40 didn't freak me out, but it was like, okay, this is a real thing, it's a real benchmark. And so I bought a house, it's be a while before I move into it, but I got that, and I'm living in a hotel. And I realize that I have no life. Now, you could say tiny violins, but it's a good life, but I have no life outside of touring. If I had a grid on a, on a spiral-bound itinerary book, mm -hmm. we don't even talk about life in time. We talk about it in place. We say things like, that's not until Dallas. There's no time. It's just place. Well, that's not until California. Well, back in Denver... And so my life only lived inside of that framework, and I took it away, and I don't have anything to do. All right. And it's freaky. Yeah. It's hard. And I go, good, fight from there. Start from there. That's why I'm bumming around the city. That's why I ran into you today. That's why I went, yeah, I'm not doing anything. I took an Uber here. I wish we could help each other, but maybe we could just commiserate. <laughs> I, but I, th I think there's a key difference between uh, us, not that I was searching for symmetry but but like i think it's important like because i'm searching myself i'm going like it makes me insecure to hear you talk about like being alone and working your craft and, and it make i think musicians make me insecure for that reason because that is something they do and the the mus the part of the a musician's career that i can relate to is the touring part mm -hmm. because that is a musician saying as dorothy parker said uh i don't like writing i like having written and 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 a musician on tour is yep. they're not gonna say thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming to the stadium i'd like to write a song in front of right. you they're like 
they can they can have their own religion about the mm-hmm. songs they've written and the stuff they want to play from their old album, the new album. But ultimately, it's like they can they they they're just that's what I can relate to. I feel like that's how I spend my life. It, but there's something fucked up about that because, and I worry about that. Like I go, oh, fuck. When's the last time you actually tested yourself? When's the last time you sat in a bathroom while the Grammys uh, uh-huh. party was happening? And I don't. I don't go home and write a story. I I I play a video game. I I watch forensic files. I don't want. I don't. I don't. I I look at writing as like this thing that I do. Like it's like shitting a fucking egg. That- I look at that with songwriting. I look at it that way with songwriting. But it's just disembodied guitar playing. I just think is the greatest thing in the world. Um, but I wonder if I had spent because how long would, would you know what I don't know. Like it's this is probably a difficult question to answer. But how long does your career really span? Like how old were you when the the, the first time someone said Jesus Christ? What the fuck? Fourteen. So I feel like if I had spent, that, 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 you know, like somewhere around there, somebody said like, you know, you're really good at writing essays. You should, you should be on the high school paper or whatever. Like somewhere, somewhere in, in our lives, somebody says, hey, you could get what you want with, uh, <laughs> by what you got. Mm-hmm. And, 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 but I, and I, I, I I'm, I've, I, when I talk to musicians, I get insecure because I feel like I, I'm not, I don't practice. Well, I don't know that I practice. I think I just check up on it. You know, I mean, you're talking. But practicing. you write songs. Yeah. You talk. Dan, you have conversations. You going out and sitting in a coffee shop is practice. You literally just practiced for the last five minutes straight. That well, was maybe just that's riffing. what that's that's why this. You know, maybe. Yeah, but I, I think go, that this is that. I go and and do it to make sure that it's still there. Because if it's not, I have my entire argument for life has failed. Like, someone said to me one time. A uh, uh, great lady worked at worked in publishing. She said to me, "John, can you imagine being famous and knowing you're not talented?" And I just went, "Whoa!" And I'll never it was to put the fear of God into me. And and when things get a little pear shaped, or they get or, or it's not even any more like but things I don't are think, too do, intense. Do you think anybody famous knows that they're not talented? Yeah, those those people would be self actualized. Like I think oh, fa- I th- fame makes you feel That's a really good question. Where is the where is the awareness? Yeah, I mean, well, I I, I if I can't figure it out, you could know then, it for them. Then how could an untalented person figure? You it could out? know it's for them. <laughs> if everyone is chanting at you, Donald, 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 I'm, you don't I riffed a name. That, you don't uh, you'd be like, well, stuff? I must be good at something. Uh, I'm good know. at getting people to shout Donald. At I me. think the entire. <laughs> but then nobody else, nobody else that you like likes you. That's how you know. Yeah, but I, yeah, so I think we're like, talking. Are we talking funny. about like Smash Mouth or I don't know what? I, I don't. I don't have enough musical. I, you. You could if you told me Smash Mouth's fucking great. Fuck you, you snob. I. I, I I'd be like, okay, John Mayer. I. I. I but I, I just meant like, 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 like <laughs> b- bands that like come in out of nowhere or whatever to keep it in the musical realm. Like, and they're like, oh my god, they're amazing. It's, uh, the, they got a hit on the Billboard charts, and like we all go, or like my music snob friends go, they're not shit they're not talented that's three power chords or whatever mm. do you think those guys are like they know they're untalented i don't think they know they're untalented i think they're like holy shit th- we fucking hit it i think it. we're talking about varying degrees of knowing you're untalented right i think these they're all shades of the same thing by the way the way your mind works is very interesting because it it's kind t- of like a wonderland and you don't need does. to say it but it, it but i want to i want to give you th- i want to but you if some- you say it before the end of the show i will It'll be a quote. I will. Is, is there a drinking game going on tonight? No, it's just, it's just more of an achievement on my end. Can I do it now? We can get it out of the I, way? If you Look, I didn't fish for it, but if you, do you want find to it interesting it. Yeah, that you I didn't could be, fish for it at all. Do you find it interesting <laughs> that a singer is just like not singing right now and is just talking? Like The same in here is the ability to sing at any moment, and I'm not. I'm just talking. Have you thought about this before? I've been thinking this whole time. It's pretty weird how he's not singing. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but when you're around a singer, you're like... That singing voice is not doing its thing. It's just, it's just uh, talking. I guess I hadn't thought about that. Oh, I think about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you right now thinking it's weird now, that you're not singing? Now I think it's well. I think it's weird that I can sing. I'm just not singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I, I mean? I, a, a more naive person would think you were teeing up a kind of a no, musical I am. number. I am. <laughs> okay. Because when I do, it'll be fun. 
He'll be like, that's right. That was in that guy's throat the whole time. <laughs> well, uh, what do we do? do so we... here I am talking. I'm a person who's talking. And at any moment that I want, I can go, your mind is a wonderland. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I just start talking but, again. But you, people wouldn't know that you were talking about me. So if I was in the lyrics, <laughs> see, this is... <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's yeah. a lot of cadence here. Dan Hold on a Harman's, second. Yeah. Dan Harmon's mind is a wonderland. Well, you kind of said the Dan Harmon. Dan part. Har Dan Harmon's mind is a wonderland. Okay, well this that's is, yeah yeah. You don't thank have you. to take notes. Look at my thank you. Thank you. That's and I'm talking and I'm singing and I'm talking <laughs> and I'm singing and I'm talking. Isn't it strange? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of strange. It's weird. <laughs> I, I could do it at any moment. I just choose not to. There's a yeah, little Robert a, Klein in it. A little Robert <laughs> Klein. <laughs> what is the? What are the things that hurt you? Like uh, in in terms of this cloud of 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 people, you know. Like I get the sense from you that I don't know. I I, I, I like 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 what? What are the adjectives that you? You wish. It, 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 forget about whether or not you've come to terms with the fact that that you can't control other right. people. But like, what are the adjectives about you that get used that really sting? Uh, womanizer, douchebag. You know, like anything from the past. I find that right now, especially with the ability to consolidate tons of information really quickly, the the, the thing. The blind spot is how we deal with past. And I think everyone should be allowed a past as a blanket statement, right? I'm not defending anything overall. But things as they exist in the past are the, are, uh, is the sort of, um, that's the gun to my head in the hostage standoff between my happiness and feeling like I got to dig out of a hole. And I find that the internet is fantastic at compiling a dossier on you that fast with one comment. All it is is someone who just won't let something go or the last big signifying piece of information they had about you was negative. You know, if I ask, we don't know, unless we Google them uh, to find out what their news is, we don't know the goings on of everybody all day. And that's the mistake we make sometimes. So people yeah. might not have had an updated take on me since 2010. And I find it so disorienting. I find it such a distortion field of reality when I'm living my life in a way that I know is fair and kind and good and advanced and improved and finally together, to have your past sort of brought to you again in, in, in what feels like really stark current clarity, yeah. it's, you have to really go, that's not true. Not, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, For, somebody rehashes it to build their website. Yeah. Somebody pulls something up from 10 somewhere, years ago. Somewhere in a clicks. comment thing, you know, and you'll go, you'll go up and it'll just, in the middle of a great thing. Yeah. A yeah. great picture and a great thing and having a great moment. And it took me a really long time to get to the point where I can be like, get over it, not true. Get over it, grow up. It's not true. And, but that's how you can get me is show me what feels like a threatening reemergence of my past and it'll it'll stop me. Although lately I've found a way to just practice looking at it and going, long time ago, dude. Come on, yeah. Come on, let's carry on. Let's like this might be your fault now that you're still bringing this up. This might actually now be on you. You know. I had a thing a couple days ago, not to embarrass my girlfriend, but um, you know she was she was doing something that I haven't done in five years, which is uh, peruse the uh, Harmontown subreddit. Uh, and I had this Me Too surfing expedition recently. I'm giving my master classes and apologies as we speak, um, but um, I, I, I live, I survive, whatever. Um, and my girlfriend was like in this subreddit where I, I haven't gone since way before that because no matter what, I'm not going to see anything there that's going to make me happy. Right. Like I'll see a million things that might make me happy, but I'll be numb to those things. And then it'll exactly. be, and then one person will be like, I wonder if I could really fucking black this guy's eye mm. from the, from this far. And like, that should be their domain. But the weird thing is, and, 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 and it's like, you think you resolve this shit, and then um, I had I had this little it was just a little episode because Cody got upset. She 
she and she sent me a screen grab of an exchange she was having with a troll in that group and it had to do with all this shit and i i i got upset with her and now now we're our seam is broken we're not on the same page i'm like and and then i'm expressing to a writer friend of mine who i'm working with in that room uh I'm 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 explaining the story to her. I'm like like oh this is happening and it's bad and like and that writer Leslie is going oh I understand where she's coming from because I did this and that and I'm telling this is all backstory to this moment that was actually genuinely like weird for me like in a world where I keep thinking that I've I'm done learning and I just want to die I I I like this writer that I respect who's like talking to me and she goes like. She goes, well, you know, and they, look, we all Google ourselves. And I, I exploded. I, 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 I was like, I was like, no, we don't all Google ourselves. I literally cannot Google myself. Do you understand? Do any of you people understand what it's like? To be unable to Google yourself. Yes, I do. It's a guilty <laughs> pleasure for you when you wish you were famous. When you hope, maybe. When you think about how shitty it might be. When you get to the point where you are choking on your own name. When you don't want to see your own face. Like, like I, I do not Google myself and have not stop putting me in that drawer and i and i wound down i'm like oh shit i got unresolved that's shit. like that's like when somebody accused you of masturbating as a kid and you really weren't <laughs> yeah. yeah like yeah like and that yes person, you know especially I mean? yes john yeah Mayer, yes. yeah yeah that's my entire childhood. Yeah. I jerked off so many times when no one said no anything. One said it. And then I spend too long doing my own laundry and I come upstairs and my mom goes, I'm reading play Playboy magazines much. Stop, get out of my pants. I was drying my clothes. That's exactly what it is. You want to know when I jerked off? It was right behind you. Yep. Yep. Right behind. Um, I, but yeah, I can't know. But it was like the weird thing is that I, I just jumped on this woman. Because she was accidentally confusing me with someone who Googles Googled themselves. themselves. I quit Googling myself. I think a lot of celebrities have quit Googling themselves. It doesn't offer any really good information. It gives you a really bad cross-section of what's happening. It's like you're not really pulling out what's really in the river. It's only the money-making headlines. Yeah, it's a weird... Who knows what the fuck the river is, though? I well, mean, I now that's what I want to make sure we talk about before whenever this thing is over is over. Um, you made it sound a little bit like you're not enjoying your... No, I am, but I, my, my... Well, so so what I do now is I, I haven't Googled myself in like three, four years, but when I... I told you this today. When I want to see something specific, um, a certain guitar that I'm coming out with or something, I'll put the name of the guitar in first and then my name because I can't even bear to watch the autofill happen. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and if I do, I just go, blah, 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 John Mayer PRS guitar because I can't see yeah. what comes up like that. It might be I one should, of the words I, that I still, I've mentioned. I don't know if I've shaken the Chevy Chase syphilis from my autofill or not. I don't know. Well, that's... Because I won't look. I'll just... I will literally... People think I'm joking. I'll close my eyes if there's some reason for me to type eyes. Dan... Because <laughs> and this goes back like to the that past. Until I thing. finish typing. What should fucking happen online is that every year, everything that had ever been posted to the internet that is not sort of textual in a reference sense should blur. Every year, it should blur 10%. So that when you see an old story, when you see someone's old point of view, you can go, yeah, but it was pretty blurry. I couldn't make most of it out. Because that's, that's like what happens in people's minds, in their hearts. Things blur over time. Yeah, and, and I feel compelled to stop here and go, by the way. It's like, because I just, like, we're not complaining. We're not saying, what was me. We're not, like, we're, we're talking about an island that you don't even know if you're listening, like, whether or not you want to get there. And I, I never, I, I never signed up for a I, I i guess i always just thought the more attention you get the better the more myspace friends you have the better the every every metric is just like well you want more and not less i want to go back in time and go no i'm artisanal right, <laughs> i want right. to i want to like squeeze it off and right. go like don't know me i don't want strangers to know my name well i do and I think it's important to square up with that. And I think it's also important for anybody watching who, who's a fan of either of ours. 
I think the one thing we haven't sort of laid out is to what extent do we wrestle with this every day? I don't, we haven't really given people context as to what fraction of our lives do we deal with this. This is a very small, I want to say that I am magnifying a very small experience. It's, it's, it's 15% of the experience and most of it I almost want to say to the world like, don't worry, I'll handle it. And it's really handleable. Right. What I find is interesting and sort of universal is how much we hand off to this, this, this voracious sort of invisible boa constrictor that just keeps consuming our thoughts yeah. that don't have a purpose. Like waking up, I know you do the same thing, you wake up and you read Twitter and something seems to you to be so cognitively wrong. Not a bad opinion, not a bad idea, but cognitively, empirically wrong. And you stare at the blinds until it's seared into your eyes, the slats of light. And you haven't even gotten a coffee yet. And you're already trying to go, you're going, fuck, how did we, and you're trying to get out the knot in the necklace that is this whole thing. And the question is, how much are you willing to trade of your life to do that, which seemingly has no real actionable outcome, versus I'm just going to live a life to scale so that I can at least enjoy some of this stuff. And I, that's certainly what I've started. I came off Twitter. I got to enjoy my life. I can't, I feel like what Twitter's trying to do right now are basically like full court trick shots instead of just like, let's just work off of basketball fundamentals. Yep. And every day is a failure to throw the ball off like the <laughs> McDonald's commercial. <laughs> and it's like, well, we'll get him again tomorrow. That's really interesting. <laughs> that's awesome. And I go, why can't you piece this out and... The answer is because there's too many. It's like, why can't you leave single file in an arena if something, if someone screams fire? Right. Because there's Very chaos. Nice. But you could get everybody out like that if you just went row one, you're out. Row two, you're out. Row three. And so every day I watch the pile on and I go, no, 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 no. And it's for things I'm allied, uh, I'm allied with, you know? And, uh, but I watch the, w the, w the course in which it takes and I, and, and I watch it every day. Every day you wake up, it's a possibility that we might get it. And within seconds, you find out, no, nah! and you find out there's a there's people are getting trampled. The only thing that nags at me is how do we know the difference between uh, getting over 40 and realizing that self-care is important and becoming old men saying, get off my lawn. I don't understand why the kids spend I all their time on the line. I think the word that we're trying to get at is fatigue. <laughs> there is fatigue. With each cycle. With each cycle. Yeah. The difference is whether you're outputting. The difference is whether we go into our bathrooms and play guitar and put stuff out. Because if you say, get off Twitter, kids, or I'm not on Twitter, do whatever the fuck you want, and you put out a single every month or whatever, it's like if you're exuding shit and, and people that are on Twitter are not exuding shit except for tweets, that that's my, the answer to my question. But I'll take you even deeper on fatigue. Let's go back to the play guitar in the bathroom thing. There's fatigue in that. You know, there, f 40 is not about some, uh, you know, r some celebration of uh, ordaining how long, you, how many years you've been alive for. It's how long you've been doing, how your memory begins to, the memory of being alive, the access you have. To, it, there's a certain fatigue where occasionally I'll say to myself, just about life in general, we still doing this? Yeah. You ever, you ever find yourself, you go, we still at this? <laughs> yeah. And it's not like... <laughs> We want to end this at all. You just go, right. we still at this? And the answer is, yep. And you go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you see you see all the days line up, and you're like, yeah, I'm at 60,000 of yeah. 140,000 yeah. just checking in. But you don't, you don't even have to look at it in that numerical way. You can just feel it. Yeah. You know, you can kind of count cards without really counting cards. Right, for sure. You just kind of feel it. It's like... We still have to? Okay. What am I about to do? Go make another record. Yeah. Okay. What, so we're going to fight from scratch to have, yep. Okay. And we're going to come home three out of four times with nothing, with an empty net. We're going to have to live off of something else that night? Yep. Yeah. We're still at this. Yep. Why? Because it's, it's got to be that way. It has to be that way. Yeah. Be that way. Because otherwise we won't sleep tonight. We can't. It won't work. Like, I, I have to risk everything. I have to have everyone hate me. I have to do it. I have to prove something to myself. Yeah. And where I think it gets really tricky is in relationship and family, getting a wife, getting a girlfriend, that takes a certain determination that might not exist in my life like it should anymore. 
because my determination is taking a natural dip. Testosterone, determination. It starts to just go down a little bit. Old jazz horn players don't play as long a line. You know, yeah, it's true. And vocalists do the same vocalists, thing. They don't sing as long. Oh, guys who used to burn on the saxophone with yeah. bop lines for four minutes to go. And everyone loves them. And everyone goes, that's the guy who used to burn. <laughs> and I used to burn, and I'm trying to still burn. I think I've got two more burning things in me. That's why I want to make sure I do on my I next I feel like round. I have one more burn. You have one more way to burn. You motherfuckers wish. It, you know we don't get to you say wish. that. You wish. We don't get to say that. You, you know we wish we had like one or two burns, but the truth is the the universe, whoever gave us the shit, is going to tell us when yeah. we get to stop you, burning. You're going to find out mid-failed burn yeah. how many burns you got. <laughs> yeah. Failed burn. Burn. That's, that's my daughter. That's my first daughter's name. Mid-failed burn. It's yeah. I wish I could retire. I don't. We don't get to, you know the deal. Yeah. You're going to be uh, six burns in. Yeah, <laughs> I just mean like, and I know I agree. I'm, I'm not saying that's not what you're saying, but I'll always be making records. But like burning things, like you listen to like Twenty One Pilots, that shit is burning. That's a twenty one, twenty two year old kid who's got yeah. so many syllables. When you're young, you got syllables. Sometimes I think too much. And I went th- <laughs> and I had those thoughts. I wish somebody could bottle the smell. And they like, I had those thoughts. I yeah. I went that close to and the wallpaper. Those wall are paper. the kids that we send to war and uh, convinced to yeah. Dark as fuck, Dan. <laughs> um, their yeah. bra- their brains are in fire, <laughs> and we go, yeah, fuck you. Like yeah. you're a child. You sh- you you need to be. But I did it. I went from welcome to the real. What she said to me, condescendingly, take a seat, take your life, blot it out. And we're not even halfway through the verse. <laughs> Not even halfway through the first <laughs> verse. That's what happens when you're younger. You burn. You want to go out. You want to drink. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is John. Hi, my name is John. And then you hopefully, through those actions, and if you dial them in enough and get enough focus, you go, oh, at the end of that nitro burn, I ended up with a wonderful wife, three kids. I got a house. I got a career. I got a thing. The stages to which my career, the booster rocket worked, and the way it burned, to stick with this burn metaphor till it dies out, um, <laughs> is that I have incredible career. I have an incredible mindset. I got to where I needed to get to, and I went, oh, shit, there's nobody. I forgot to pick someone up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then yeah. add to that the trauma that everybody feels through the way that they live through their 20s for dating and 30s for dating, and I have that times 100 because I chose in many ways without knowing it to do that in a very visible way that in a way my brain is just fried from it, you know? Um, that's the part that scares me. Everything else is a joy ride. The part that scares me is that, like, I might have missed the boat. And in which case, it would still be cool because I would just be like Rich Uncle John. Who you could come to his island <laughs> and a drone comes out to get you first. And you're like, you start running after the drone. You see the drone first, like War Games. You're running Remember after the drone? Remember yeah. War Games when they're going to see Joshua? On yeah. The there was a, a helicopter came, but helicopter that was came. pre-drone. But yeah. Do you, uh, if you talk just like that your drone, you have to run after it because you're. Oh, well, fucking, uh, well, that's how fancy you are. They would get off the boat. This is John Mayer's drone. It doesn't come hunting you. You have to fucking well, I'm just, chase it. I'm trying to make a good impression on my niece who I haven't seen. And she's seven, probably. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have seen my niece in like seven years. And I'll give her the drone. It's... It's going to be hers. <laughs> if you, you chase know. the drone and catch it, you can keep a you John Mayer drone. <laughs> the John Mayer drone will go, your mind is your a wonderland. Is a wonder. Now I'm doing an impression of people doing an impression of you. <laughs> the white noise, just all white. That's the name of my next album. Are you, we hear that you are a Rick and Morty fan. Is that true? Huge Rick and Morty fan. I, I'm such a big fan of Rick and Morty that as I watch it, I lament the minutes I've already watched it for. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, we're four, no, four, I don't four know. minutes in. What, what, what's the, uh, well, I mean, that seemed like a segue we could talk about Rick and Morty, but I actually, I don't know. I wanted to hear, like I asked you, you said douchebag and womanizer. These are things that, that, that sting, which I look at as like with, I'm just like marveling. I'm like, must be nice Never enjoyed to it. have being called a womanizer. Uh, <laughs> your kryptonite. Uh, like maybe it's because when you talk, I want to fuck your brains out. I, ah! I, but but uh, I always tell people, if you think that I thought that I was good looking growing up, why do you think I would have played guitar six hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> there's my there's your answer. I played guitar six hours a day. If I had any inclination or belief in myself that I was good looking, I'm sure I don't have the will to have done that. What are the things you like to hear? What are the things you wish to hear, or when you hear them, that it's like fucking like even secretly like you're I like, just like I, God damn it, I love hearing. I like that. when people That's... say like you're my Clapton. 
I like because I can use that. That's a good, clean, linear line item way to be like, that's what's going on. Because you you do want proof that you're living your life in the format of your dreams as a kid. What does that mean to you? You're Mike Clapton. Like that, it means everything I tried to be, I got I, I got to it. Because I tried to be Eric Clapton. And well, because what, what was Clapton to you? Um, an incredible mix of blues guitar and mainstream music. Which, not to get super technical, but blues music isn't really an, an idiom of yeah. music. It's a style of writing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compositional form, you know. And there's not a lot of money in blues. There's not a lot of audience in blues. And it's part of me thinks it's because blues needs to be mixed with another compound to come to life and and you could say for everybody who came around they kind of they kind of were they mixed the, the, am i know. right in saying stevie ray vaughan sort of did the same thing yeah stevie ray vaughan did the same thing jimmy hendrix did the same yeah. thing you know um and clapton is is the guy who fused really incredibly uh prestigious blues playing with pop music and that's incredibly hard to do to get the, to get this is, you know to get those two organisms to live together and not reject each other and just turn into a blob in a petri dish, like it's really hard. Like nine out of ten attempts to do it, you just end up with nothing. So I mean that's that's a that that, that guy stands in his own universe. You know, there's not many. Other it's people. in the way that you use it. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that's a cool song? I think it's a funny song. I, the thing I think is funny about it is that it's it's the only song I've ever heard that starts mid refrain. Yeah, there's a couple. <laughs> it's really of funny that that song just goes. All it's right, here we way. go. <laughs> like, normally, a song like that should right, start with. Right. Sometimes you use things. Sometimes the way. Bum bum. That was a big is '80s trick, though. Sometimes, and then you build and build and build, and it's like, and you're waiting for him to go. It's a, but he was just like, like I just think it's funny that the needle drops on that record. It's like two. Three. It's, it's in, in the, the way, way that you use it. Fuck it. And, the, and, then they, and then they eventually come around to proving that that was the refrain. Yes. It's like, like, that's not the verse. So that's the refrain. That came from 80s producer mindset, which was like, got to hit him with the hook. There's no time. <laughs> no time for this. There's these, no these, time. These kids are going to buy a Pokemon yep. uh, instead of your record if yep. you give them five yep. measures. That's the way it is now. I mean, you got <laughs> you to hit him with the mixtape in one right. song. You know. One don't pick up the phone. You know he's only wanted a highway cone. Two, don't poop in your shoe. I got the rules to tell to you. Three. This is, this is the whole record in one song? I, know, I don't know. I was just thinking oh. of like, you got to get, like that, that, that song it reminds me of a BuzzFeed article. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, it's a, like a listicle song. Yeah. I went skydiving in an airplane. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that country has that a lot. Here's six ways to lose weight by Friday. Yeah. Yeah, like I would make it up and it'd be like, I went skydiving, I went mountain climbing, I walked 50,000 miles across the land. We're only halfway through. I swam across the river, I walked across to get her, but there's one thing that I'll never understand. And then a completely different word, like word phrase that just like lands like, like unbalanced into the title. Yeah. Well, I don't know but, but I why <laughs> you're not a bun for my hot dog. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, That's and you're right. like, wait, what? What How do we the get mountain there? guy? Why would you climb there? a mountain? How do we get there? <laughs> well, this was just misdirection. Yeah. <laughs> and at the last line, it's like, but I'm, but, but check your back pocket. That's right. I got your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's taking your wallet? I'll mix your metaphors, darling. I'll mix them better I wrote than a... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wrote a, I wrote a line one time. It was just, I couldn't handle it. I wouldn't put it. You're like a metaphor I've never heard before. <laughs> and I went, that's so cyclical because no one really has heard that metaphor before. And if you wondered, does John Mayer have a theoretical limit to how poetic something can be? Yes, that, w that will never make the cut. <laughs> there it is, yeah. I thought, I thought in, 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 in Your Body's in Wonderland, I know it's like, oh, it's your, it's your hit, and you're not like, oh, it's also, I'm most proud of it. But I did think, the the verse where you compare, you, where you say your nipples are like uh, Epcot Center. It was 
I, I, I pushed it. I, I, I think you're pushing the metaphor. Yeah, it's like you didn't have to go through every part of the body and well, and, and compare it to a theme park. I, uh, your toes are like yeah. a, long, a quick pass. Yeah, your toes are like little 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 shrimp. And then uh, uh, and then I said you have a langoustine pinky toe. I, I, I just I just if you love a woman, just tell her you love her. A lot of yeah. times that's good enough. When you <laughs> love a woman, that was a direct. Response to your body as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Adams wrote, "When you really love a woman, is a way to tell me to shut the fuck up in your body as a woman." <laughs> you don't have to write a cheesy song about how body parts are like <laughs> right. Cause when you find yourself lying helpless in her arms, you know you don't need a stupid song. <laughs> You, I'm like, man. Your vaginas like the haunted hotel before they were using it to advertise the Eddie Murphy movie. Your vagina is the classic version of that. I've got like a fast a... pass to your titties, so I'm gonna eat at your naval restaurant. <laughs> you had that cadence. I take a fast pass to your titties. <laughs> it was very western. I took There's a no fast way. pass to your titties. I'm curious and about the slow bow to. I'm, well, I'm curious <laughs> about singing. Yeah. I, I because well, so people just have pipes, right? Yeah. So is that genetic? You yeah, and it actually is. As I get older now, I realize I can't take it personally if someone says I can't sing or I, can't, I go like, this is the shape my voice is in. I literally can't change it. Whatever my f pharynx is, whatever the larynx is, it's a shape. And it's like a f the shape of a wind instrument. So I'm very good at singing low and I'm very bad at singing high. In fact, worse than ever because I had some vocal issues. You had surgery. Yeah, like surgery. You battled back. It's was it? awesome. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. Thank you. I, I, I looked at it like Kobe would look at it, which is like, yeah, if you need to go into the knee, go, go into the knee. If I can't play a, a, a season, I want a championship next year. So go into the knee this year. And so, would you have continued just to if? Would you have just continued to play guitar if that had gone down? Yeah, but I gotta tell you, I learned how much I love singing because I yeah. did do that, and they're linked. I didn't think they were linked. That's like, once I got my voice back, I was like, okay. With what I have, which is still mostly capable. When you people know. who can sing are singing, uh, as a person who cannot sing and who occasionally then sings, like in karaoke, like the rest of us, and you have these moments where you're like, oh, you're listening to yourself and you go, oh, I sound a little bit like George Michael for that one moment. Uh -huh. um, like w when people who can sing, like, do you, is there a dread? If you're in front of a stadium and you're singing, do you. Is every note like an evil Knievel jump, That's or are funny. you just like, nah, I got this? I uh, some are. When I, okay, so when I feel like I have, I've well slept, acid reflux is in check. I sleep on a medicated pillow, a <laughs> prescription <laughs> pillow. It's a it's on a slant. I sleep on my side. I hide it when company comes over, but <laughs> most of the time I use it. And. Um, that's like on the 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 sexiness of John Mayer atmosphere. The medicated pillow just bounces off. Sorry, like I have a, a prescription pillow. Uh, but then I you could also cool. see, like, because I'm a singer. Uh, but when I know that the facility is there, it's really really fun. But singers are a notoriously sensitive hyper-focused, neurotic bunch because the voice is never the same way two days in a row. It's My voice has never been the same way two any two days. It, it's just a natural thing. Your voice changes. There are things you could go for on the record that don't sound the same live. And that's another thing I've come to, to live with over the years. But when you're young and it's the showcase and you're in L.A., let me tell you this. When you're in L.A. for your showcase, you're starting out, you're playing the club, you will get sick. You just will. <laughs> you just will get sick. You'll wake up that day and go, ha, ah, ah, and you live with that, and you go crazy for the day. You take prednisone. Every singer has prednisone stashed away. Every well, singer and, dopes and, and, in that and, sense. And, and it's because there are, there are horror stories. It's up here. Right? Or, well, but have you, 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 you ex do you experience these moments where, like, like what's the worst case scenario? It's Because from the layman's perspective, all we understand is like, oh, it's like the rock star game where like there's eight notes and you hit the note right. And then the you professionals are like, it, it, oh, no, it's all this other shit. And like, but we look at it like, oh, Madonna canceled her gig. Sorry, I'm dating myself. Uh, the the She canceled her gig. Cause she's got a sore throat. OK, well, that's the big. But but to me, the nightmare wouldn't be canceling a gig. It would be. Is there this the nightmare thing? is canceling the gig because. 
you just stare out your hotel window. Have you ever been in front of a bunch of people and been yes. like, your uh, body is a ha? <laughs> yes, but I've learned that they really most of the time can't tell. And you interpret, right? Yeah, and most so, of the time yeah. they can't tell. Yeah. 98% of the and time they can't tell. And so that's my next tell. question. Like, what? It's not So it's not just this empirical thing because no. your voice, I can hear it even though I don't even like music. I'm like... I get it. There, you can get it. I right. know why your voice is special. I can hear it. Like, are you? So you're listening to different shit, and you're going, "Shit, I lost five percent of the mare sound." So this is the difference between having a good performance and giving a good performance. You can give a good performance, which means you liked it, you liked it, you liked it, but I didn't have a good performance. Mm -hmm. And having a good performance is in the user experience of how it feels to have the automat arm. Go for the note, pull it, have the muscles go reap like that, have the air pushed through the right way, have the microphone turned up loud enough and the monitors in the right way and the thing bouncing around, the sound waves right. bouncing around the room the right way and they come back to you in a way that says, and you, you are God. And it feels good. That's what I wanted to know because the like actually that's how normal people feel too. When they accidentally hit a note, that's why we sing oh, in the I shower. Oh, I what you're saying. Because the shower makes us feel like that. Do you think that every normal person, do you, <laughs> the, your parlance, do you think that uh, every one of them has one like pet favorite line from a song they yes. sing that they've picked yes. up in the shower because it sounds Mike Crivello's world is a wonderful world of cameras <laughs> yeah uh, sorry I it's a it's a commercial from Milwaukee uh, ah. no it's a, it's a, but it's a, it's more importantly the but yes the answer to your question is yes like people like do you have one uh, is there a song, you, like a little line, you go, I oh, still got it on that one. You test it out. <laughs> yeah, if I can hit any, like, um, this is dating myself, but any Philip Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Michael McDonald is falling apart as I get older. As you get older. But so did his. Right, so right, right, like, right. Okay, right. I'll just learn to sing how right. he sings now. Um, I love those. I love. I, I keep listening to Easy Lover all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's and why we, we get along because I'm a Phil Collins guy. We didn't yeah. ever sung Easy Lover together. It's yeah. such the drummer's mix of that song. Because it's two, dr you know, dueling drummers. Yeah. So you were like, it's, oh, they had to agree on this track. It's they really had to love this track because it starts out with big drums. Actually, that also starts out with Easy Lover. Yeah. Same oh, way. you're it starts right. With the frame, you're absolutely right. With the right. It yep. starts with the fucking. Refrain. That was the eighties thing. Was like hit. You Got to got to hit him. Got to hit him with. <laughs> got to hit him with a hook first. <laughs> got to hit him with a hook. It's, it's gonna be a hit. But I thought actually to myself, there's a real the sign of an amazingly good song, is when I hear it, and I wonder what it must have been like the night the artist finished it, and sat back and played it for the manager, and imagine being like Joel, come here, Joel, sit down, press play. And you hear And Joel's like, I like it. You're like, shut up, Joel. How's he even hold on? You're like, easy lover. And you're just like this. Yep. Like, that's a victorious moment. Yeah, I love the producer nod that's like. This is a hit. Imagine <laughs> that. In every like documentary where like they just knew it right But I kinda think that yeah, but it's interesting to note that like you feel the same feeling that my uncle yeah. feels in the shower. It, like there are the. It's just the. It's just that when you're feeling it, 100%. it's more in line with a bunch of people hearing there it. Is no but way. we all feel it when we like like that sensation of fuck. I'm nailing it. Uh -huh. And it's like it's weird to me as a person who doesn't understand anything about music or singing. Like what? Yeah, what is that? But it doesn't. That's last a different very long. podcast. I'll tell you, as a guitar player. Anybody who picks up a guitar can feel the same way I feel. It's so scalable. It's the same feeling. That's what that's what makes it a magic thing. Like you take it home and you learn fire and rain. I promise you it has the same experiential bliss that my writing gravity does. I'm sure of it. But just imagine being like, hey Dan, can I play you something? Check this out. Here I have a seat. You wanna I was born by the river. <laughs> like yeah. the moment yeah. in a little tin in the strings. The strings. strings. Yeah, just like that river I've been and like, and I'm watching to make sure you don't get on your phone. <laughs> Ever since, gonna be alone. That's the first time anybody's heard it. Long time coming, and I know. Whoa, you're like, he likes it. Chain gone, and then like some guy goes, "Do the strings have to start from the beginning?" And you go like, <laughs> Bobby, I told you put tambourine in it. Uh, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, I told you put tambourine. I told you you're not gonna hook up the recorder. I told you my daughter play recorder. You Bye -bye. know this is for Colgate Records. They want it minty. <laughs> this doesn't feel minty. 
<laughs> you gonna say river? You gonna say field? You was born by a field, Bobby. <laughs> I miss the days when the lead singer the, uh, would talk to the drummer. Hey, what you gonna play now? Right. <laughs> Have you ever seen the thing on YouTube? The um the young lady singing the jingles in the eighties for the uh, bread company. It's uh, yeah. patty patty cake patty cakes. Patty cakes. Uh, she, she, uh, it's it's like forty minutes of her doing um, takes on this jingle, and it's the the it's just it's uh, you, your heart goes out to her, and she's just like she's in this s- sweater, and it's the eighties, and it's VHS, and she's just in this booth, and just like it's just over and over again, endless takes. She's like, uh huh, okay, all right, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Patty cakes. <laughs> Patty cakes, because clearly what they're saying is like, give it more bread. I like, like, like they, they, she's not singing about something she feels anything about, but she's trying, and, to, and, and then it's, it's, you just watch her like reaching for it. It's just like, Patty, do you know that patty cakes are my bread? And then, and then, like, she keeps getting cut off so many times, you never get to the. I guess you'd call it a bridge, but it's a jingle. But and the, but that's the amazing part is like twenty minutes into this reel, you get she finally gets all the way to the point where you get to hear the rest of the song, and it's like a bridge, and she's like, "Cause it's good bread, <laughs> you know, it's good bread." <laughs> Like that's that's the that's the 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 Valhalla you get to if you jump through all those hoops you get to sing it's good bread. <laughs> and this poor woman like who's born with the voice of God like, like everyone's get, like the creatives are given this gift and then they're like they're they're just putting these actual glass boxes <laughs> like can you give us a little more raisin on the raisin cuz it's raisin bread. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. I just think it'd be so fun. It's just like the realism of like hearing a little bit of what she hears on the track through her earphones, just like a little bit. You just hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear that little bit through her, through her headphones. Patty cat. Patty. Run it back. Uh, the uh, I imagine that someone like you probably has lived his whole career like wondering when do I get an opportunity to sing. Like the improvised hook for an improvised rap uh, about <sighs> just anything. I, like, like when do I get to really let loose and just be John Mayer on the Dan Harmon rap? Well, I'm a, I believe now that the the way that I can speak to my abilities without sounding arrogant is to speak to my potential. I believe that I am a man of infinite potential. I believe that my potential is far greater than anyone else's potential. And I believe that. So I don't even know what I'm capable of. I am also just discovering. Every day I wake up, if I choose to, I can put my hand in a goldfish bowl and pull out something new, something I didn't know that I could do. This is a I Super Bowl to, I, I think I, you, you caught me on the same night. Yes. I'm feeling the same way. I, I don't know if I can rap. And b- m- one might say, that anything that's come to me that has been deleterious in any way has come because of my belief in my potential. Yes. Holy shit. It has all just been infinite potential. And this is why I feel like I get flattened out and two-dimensional when things go my way because I lose the sight of my potential because my potential is realized and I don't feel at home there. So whatever song you have, Dan Harmon, oh, shit. I want you to believe that I'm going to drop into it oh, with shit. vigor and dedication. Like it was my patty cakes. Let us bring this vigor. Give me a beat. Don't give me time to think about it. Oh, shit. Yo. Yo. Rap isn't about thinking. It's a, the Titanic's not about sinking. It's about floating on the ocean with water. Rap is going from mothers to daughters. The patriarchy has got to come down. 
I fucked your mama so hard I turned her smile upside down. But that doesn't mean she started frowning. It just means happiness was inverted for her. Yo, oh. my name is Dan Harmon. I'm here to say that I'm here to say things in a rapping way. I like to rap west and rap to the east. I, I fucked your mama like a beast. But let's talk about the earth and horizons. I, I, I fucked your mama and it was surprising. I'm not trying to use the fuck your mama crutch. I'm, 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 I'm not Starsky or Hutch. I... <laughs> I'm rapping for real from the top of my head. John Mayer's here to, to help me. It's it's. I'm gonna respect his involvement and not be hack. I'm gonna flow from my head down to my heart and rap instead in a real way, and rap from the soul and and do it like rock and roll. I'm gonna rap like a stream, rap like a mountain. I, I fucked your mama like she was a fountain. Okay, stop. Don't no. Don't stop. I didn't mean you stop. I'm rapping. Take it. Don't you know it's now or never We can't do it all so clever Yo. We gotta do it together Yo. Uh, uh. We do it gotta together. do it together Yo. Don't you know it's now or Yo. never All we got to be is clever Yo. And don't you know we yeah. got to do it together Yo. Yo. All we got to get Yo. together Birds from a feather they flock together, depending on the weather. When it's warm out, they go down to Miami, and they fuck your mama like Sammy, uh, a, a friend of mine. All right, d d just give me a chance. Okay, all right, give me a chance. Just give me a second. Uh, it, 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 we're okay to fail here. Rap, rap. You know it's now or never. Okay. Tell yeah. your mama, check the weather. Exactly. Whatever we do is clever. Yeah. When we... All get together. Yep. Yeah. When we rap, we, we, we join together and then together. we clap. Yeah. <laughs> and then we do it together. Not and friends. And, and then we're friends. And and that, it's, it's a, yo. Yo. When I went, I, 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 I'm, I'm rapping. So, Bumble. Yeah. No, it's fine. Everything. Stammer. Yo. You know, just keep, we keep rapping. So, hey. A foot and a shoe. I, I fucked your mama and shot my glue. I, 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 I put it on her envelope, and and then we went off and got married. We eloped. I, I proposed to her, and she said yes. And then we went and met Herman Hess. He was a Nazi war criminal, but he was fine. He, he's not a good person, but he allowed us to dine in his Siddhartha. living room. Uh, and he gave us some, some 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 shrooms, and we went in the backyard, and we looked at our hands, and they looked like cosmic shards, and they were reflecting the moonlight. And we said, "Holy shit, humanity is united like loaves of bread." Oh shit, we're all yeast, and we're rising up to the west and the east. And Dan Harmon is your daddy now. He's been here with your mother, and he likes to tell the world about it. There's no harm in harming. Yo. Yeah. John Mayer. Don't Yo. you know that there's John no Mayer. harm in harm and being your daddy. John Mayer. He could have broken the news maybe a John little Mayer. better, but Yo. <laughs> what better time John. than a freestyle line to let you know Yo. that he'll be coming home Yo. to put you in your place Yo. via your mama's face. Yeah. Dan yeah. Harmon. Yeah. There's no harm in harm. Yeah. I should give you two different hooks to choose from in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not going to edit it. Yo, here's me at a different pitch. I'm, 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 I'm doing a, a different sitch. I got my uh, vocoder over here. I turned the knob, and now I'm, 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 I'm singing at a higher uh, pitch. Okay, we won't do that. I, yo, I, yo, 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 yeah. Yo, 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 yo. John Mayer went to lunch one day, and he saw your mama, and he said, hey, and he said, my name's John Mayer, and she said, hi, and he said, I'm going to take you to the sky, and he sang, your body's a wonderland, but what about my dick, and she said, I'm not standing in line for it, and he said, you don't have to, I'll take you to the front, and she said, yo, you got a fast pass to my front uh, Yes! Thing. All right. Yes! Yes! You're Ten fearless. minutes left. That one's called it's Fast a, Pass. A, a, you know, you're fearless. It's a window. You don't Ten let minutes. the fact that you can't think of anything stop you from going. No, that's the that's the virtue of you it. You might all. say my mind is a wonderland. <laughs> he did. He already did. <laughs> well, he said it, but <laughs> so two he said hooks. it in multiple oh, ways. No. He took notes. He said I gave you two different hooks. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I gave you. <laughs> There's no Holland, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And also, we came full circle because you got to actually do some add-ins. I did. We talk, at the top of I the did. conversation, we were saying, who's the dude that does the rap add-ins? Yep. Yeah. You, you said Her Herman with Hess. Sid Hartha. And I said Sid Arthur. Said I dropped Sid Arthur. That was Arthur perfect. Arthur. I mean, come on. I don't it's think hard to do. It's hard to do. You did it. It's hard to do. It is hard to do. I mean, I'm serious. I was thinking that whole time. You just busted off Sid Arthur. I couldn't do one. Yeah. It was great. Well, it was you have to great. Be, you have to be an open channel, but not too open. I try to close my channels. Yeah, I op I try to keep the aperture just as gaping wide as possible. That makes sense. Well, why don't you guys that. get a room? You know, he's not going to be back here next week. I won't be back next week. I didn't think he was. Um, well, you don't have to cozy up to him like this. I, I say he's a guest. I'm trying to make him feel welcome and like he didn't make a mistake tonight. Okay, we'll try <laughs> to walk a line where you don't make me feel unwelcome. I, I'm just saying. I love right. that I'm, on I'm the I'm night talented. of the Grammys, I, take you for granted. I wrote a, a song with Dan Harmon about the fact that he's having copious amounts of sex with America's mother. Yeah. America's mother. <laughs> now... This this does circle back to everything we were talking about, being disruptive, being strange. On Grammy night, I showed up here, and we jammed out, and uh, my fate is unclear. We'll probably win a this. Grammy next year for this. That's, that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we put together, and I was going to say, the one thing I didn't get to is, Dan, the way your mind works, and I, I love being a map maker. Wonderland-ish. Wonderland-ish. Oh, that's why I could never get to it. There was the Wonderland smoke bomb went off. You, you subdivide. Your brain cleaves. You take one thing, you cut it into two. You go, because it's A and B. You take B, and you go, because it's B uh, with one and two in italics underneath. You, you build this kind of increasingly, w what's the mathematical uh, theorem where you just keep cutting the distance between here and the wall, and you never get to the wall? Oh, uh, uh, ADD? I yeah, don't so, know. yeah, you have this thing where you continually keep cutting, subdividing the idea. Jesus, John And I here. like to do the opposite. I like to lump the ideas, and I would like in the final five minutes to put things into boxes a little bit. How are things in general? Are you generally happy, though? Fantastic. I'm generally fantastic, right. yeah. So you're, you're working in the, in, the, in the little nooks and crannies of things you would just, yeah. as everybody wants to maintain and get to a, a, a healthier place. Yeah. You just seem to be more in touch with what those things are. You, you tend to... Which might be called gratitude, like looking and going like, oh, here's the box I'm in. It's pretty good it's compared pretty to good. people in Lebanon. I have to put things back into boxes if I take them out like we have. I think it's important to put them back in and go like, so what is a great thing? What is something you love? What's a simple pleasure where you go, God, I love being on this my planet? My girlfriend. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Is that, is that, do you, would you, are you, are you, a, are you an alt-right guy? Are you going to call me a cuck now? No, because I never fully figured out how cuck the term applied to politics. Yeah. I, I still don't. don't understand. Well, what about just loving your, I love my girlfriend. I'm really happy to be with her. I'm so excited I found somebody. And it's not just because she's in the room. I swear to God, she's not usually here. I, 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 I she may have left already. I, I, but I really genuinely like it's a thing that I've found not a not that she's a thing it's I'm I just so happy a anybody would understand it uh, and forensic files uh, uh, so you do so we don't have to worry about you being in a constant state yeah of, no no when you, when you're not hearing from me I'm happy hey that's what I think is important that no news is good better. news that made, <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel better because I tend to wear the sympathetic residue of people's problems. The more you go into something, I, I track it. My brain has such traction on things that I wear. Like, if you ask me, like, what's that word that starts with a P that's not, and I will, I will text you four days later and be like, are you sure it doesn't start with an L? Really? Yeah, I will. So I will you were gonna worry. You were gonna walk out of here worried about me being depressed. I would stuff? have texted you, not worried about being depressed because you can handle yourself. You're obviously here, but I would probably have texted you other things to try to put into context what yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure you did or didn't I'm have. truly, truly happy. Like, I'm very happy. I'm frustrated at this current time with the fact that uh, the way out of this life is not is keeps changing. The I exit ramp keeps being updated. And it's a frustrating thing, but... That's called privilege. Like, it's, it's like it's like well, I just wanted I wanted to know that I could I could with right. uh, five years I had a plan and it's they just keep changing the exit ramp and I'm like it's these people right. but inside my car it smells like pine right uh, yeah, uh, really Phil really Collins good. is playing <laughs> uh, it's very yeah. good there is uh, nothing wrong it's you that's changing the plan it's and that's the good news. It's, it's not well, I mean, I, I guess I could. I, I would argue with that. I think it's. Yeah, I, You've I don't got a strong, intelligent voice that seems to be able to um, hold up against a lot of forces that normally drive intelligent minds crazy. I'll probably be fine. 
I just, I just didn't, I just didn't see myself lifting anything after forty-five. Like, I just wanted. I had this image in my head. Like, I thought I'd be retired by now because I, my dad worked hard until a certain age, and I was like, well, that was dumb. You should do it that earlier. Could you be retired if, if you had all the money in the world you ever yes. wanted? Could you, yep. could you do it? Yes. Could you yep. wake up tomorrow? Yep. Be op- you, yes. Money's in the bank. Everything's yep. good. You couldn't spend it if you tried. Yes. You would be, you would be okay being retired. Yes. Does you think that's true? No. Look at the face. <laughs> Fuck no. No, you you because you could you could have mm. you could have no gotten, no like, I couldn't have no I couldn't have no no that's it's like it's, in, in L A broke writer money that's like 10 this is years. like when people are like everybody yeah. googles themselves I'm like nope can't Google myself it's fucking good. can't I think do it's it you that moves the gold post yeah I think so. I mean, let's not. I mean, I like you, that you accidentally said gold post because <laughs> it kind of is. You know, gold because it kind of is like gold post at this point. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you know. You're a fan of Rick and Morty. Do you know that Brandon does the voice of Mr. Goldenfold, uh, the uh, math teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Just a trivia. That's great. I like him very much because uh, he's drawn just a little differently than everyone else. <laughs> he's drawn from a different kind of nomenclature than. Than everyone else on the show, you know what I mean. It looks like he stumbled in from a different cartoon. He's based very much on a real life uh, math teacher I had in seventh grade, uh, <laughs> who, whose last name I can't remember. But he looks yeah. like some sort of animation exchange program. <laughs> someone from Rick and Morty is in some other like Fat Albert esque <laughs> kind of show. I like that his name is Mr. Goldenfold and the principal's name is Mr. Mr. Vagina. Uh, like, I, like, like I don't know what the rest of the faculty like. Is everything just you know. great? Phil Hendry. The great, the Phil Hendry. great, Phil Hendry. Uh, Genius. All right. Well, obviously you're not plugging anything. We're no, not I just go, like hey, you. go to John Mayer's uh, uh, Kickstarter. No. He's uh, he's trying to start an actual Wonderland. Just just like me. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I, I would I would enjoy a, a couple comments. I'll probably go creeping around for him. Or like, uh, and this is the best I can do at this point in my life. And someone's like, don't love his music, but I like. Funnier than I thought. Would you, which is still an would insult you, would you, to Would you really like that? I, I'm really curious about that. Would you? Would you? Would you like that? that I don't would care. Fucking if someone, drive me crazy. Yeah, I don't care if someone likes the music. I, would, I just like when, I like people have to put up a lot of disclaimers. Like, I actually, gotta say, like <laughs> for for someone who like me, they have to put up like six or seven disclaimers. I, I gotta say, not a fan of his music, and his past is shady, and I wasn't into this and that. Your body is Wonderland is dumb, but I have to tell you in confidence that I do believe now after watching this podcast that. Uh, I now know nothing about John Mayer, <laughs> and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for something positive to come along. I've settled all debts with the man. We'll see what he comes out with next. I always see the opposite when I see somebody go like, "I love Community, and I love Rick and Morty, and I like I've been trained now." When I see those two statements, that so- those sound like great things. But I know no one would say that online if they weren't about yep. to fucking tear yep. me apart. That's why I like the as opposite, a human which being. Is, don't love his music. He's a giant piece of shit. I'm like, come, come, what, what? And, but I got to say, funnier than I thought. I go, yes. Uh, I really, I mean, I am, I am, I am super grateful for you co- to coming by, not just because you're super famous and it was like an interesting star fucker win, but like, the, the, Honest. the honestly, the re- I really, really wanted you to come on the show because I, we had a moment of eating pepperoni pizza and like, I... I just, um, yeah, you, 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 you exude an intelligence and uh, an awareness that uh, made me excited to talk to you, and I, 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 I bet a lot of our uh, listeners are, are, are happy for it. So, and and it's, it's, it was. You don't do this a lot. You're not no. like on every podcast. I had to write some friends who've asked me to be on co- podcast before, and I said I wouldn't. I literally texted them on the way here. Literally, I actually. Honestly, texted them on the way here, and I was like, "Just want to let you know, I'm going off the Dan Harmon's podcast. I told you no in the past, but he cornered me and <laughs> told me that I had to do it, and and so I'm just want to let you know. So yeah, I've lifted the embargo for this because I find you far too interesting. Uh, I think you are diseased with your own intelligence. We could disappear up each other's asses, like yep. as a. Uh, I, 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 the show I, title. I, we have finally found the show <laughs> title. <laughs> disappear <laughs> up each other's asses and that's right no but i really want you to know how grateful i am i that, that's so cool that you came out to the middle of burbank on a sunday night Thank by you. yourself and came here and shared your fears and insecurities and your uh your your pride and all in your all the shit with us like I, I love transparency and honesty and um i've your your soul is the opposite of a wonderland thank you man it's a deep labyrinth it's a deep la- land um Thank you. It also, there's other credit. songs that he that he that he wrote. Yep. <laughs> oh. Seven seven Grammys. 
Spencer, is there anything? I thought you, there was a reason he kept hitting it. Is there anything yeah. you ever wanted to ask or say to John Mayer? No, I just I identify with a lot of the stuff you were saying on stage. I don't know. Uh, I have the the tiniest slice of tiny internet fame, but a lot of what you're saying is stuff that I I've wrestled with and dealt with in the past. is very illuminating and helpful. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean we could talk. I mean we did. We never. We could open that module up for an hour and go into the the mechanics of like how to process what people say about you. But um, you know, most people give their give themselves up in the way they write the first sentence. You know, you, you start seeing vocabulary. Like they don't realize <laughs> that they follow a pattern. We do. We know they follow a pattern. So most of the time, people just out themselves as being lame in the first sentence. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Occasionally, someone will get a good hit in, and then I'll be like, that's a good hit. <laughs> like, like I, I, have you ever gone as far as like finding out like the Twitter account of the person who wrote the article, and you just think about reaching out? Well, I, I I always look. I look at all of their accounts because when when somebody like takes a shot at me, I always I, I block all of them, and I it be and I get and usually before I block them, I'll like send them a snapshot of their profile with their follower numbers, and then the fact that they were following me circled uh-huh. in red, and then I'll block them because I'm just Trumpy. like, why are you following somebody and talking shit? You're dumb. Your existence is dumb. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. The whole thing comes down to an Acura Integra. I knew it. It all comes down to an Acura Integra. Beautiful car. I'm sure it's a great value. (laughs) People want you to have one so that Acura keeps giving money to the people who want you to have one. 50% of the articles that are written on these sites that try to sell you the Acura are very important. They're meaningful. The other 50% it's absolute garbage meant to drive you to just nothing but sales and clicks. Your responsibility is to figure out which 50% is which and block out the dumb shit. That's the challenge. And it all goes back to an Acura Integra. That's true. All right. That's, yeah, that's the closer. Yeah. Let's fucking close the show. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to monopolize it. John Mayer, ladies and gentlemen, uh, th- thank him for coming. Thank you very much. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. And let's let's end our podcast. Let's let's go, let's all go do things that uh, are relatively important, like going to bed with Cody. All right. I'm going to drive home Your and think about the worst thing I said. It's going to get in my head. It's going to corkscrew. Your it's going to say, John, fuck you. Wonderland. There's some things you just shouldn't do. You're gonna run the whole transcript through that brick you call the brain, and then you're gonna complain. You're gonna ask if you can take it out, and the next time they put it up on the net, you're gonna say, uh, that thing I'd rather forget. Can we take the rap out and we do it yet? I just don't wanna hear from people telling me that there was something I said that they could get the smell on me, that I was trying too hard in the backyard. I bought the milkshake, but it had lard, and it was all curdled. Yeah, I don't wanna be that way, so I think I did it right. But now that I did, that's why I kept rapping tonight. So when I get in the car, I think about the rap. This is the thing that I did that's crap. To make it off balance, to make it strange. It's gotta be strange. So tomorrow is a new day, a new direction, a new way. I gotta improve, I gotta change. I did it too well tonight, that racks my brain. I gotta get in the tub and wonder what I can write to tell you, can you take a couple things out tonight? Cause I don't like two legs, I don't like four legs, I don't like even pegs. I like shit missing. That's when my brain goes blissing out. Ooh, opioid love, ah. Uh. Up there in the tub, ah. Uh. Holy Never fuck, the love, John uh. Mayer just blew our fucking mind. You buried the lead. You fucking rap good. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I did it in front of you. You can never come back again. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you! Uh, that was That's a nice guitar part. A tasty guitar part. <laughs> Or press that Ableton button. It's real good. Go. This is how fast you rap. Okay, you're rapping the fast. If you can only rap this fast if you talk gibberish. If I'm saying I can't talk for anything, I was like, you just rap this fast and you're making it up. And you fucking rap it fast. I can't. No one can. I can't freestyle that fast. That's fucking crazy. Oh, took it out. Took it out. Hello, eighties. Took it out. Boop da boop da. That's not even in the right key. <laughs> some Sonny Rollins shit right there. What this time is, is your massage uh, scheduled so for? Much, everyone. Good night.
Without yeah. You, take chances, drive fast. And yeah. Thanks to Steve Levy. Thanks to Chris Borov, Zach the Audio Maniac, Sarah Hill, Nolan Fabricus, Kevin Day, uh, Brandon, our guest comptroller, of course, Dan Harmon, John Mayer. Thank you so much. Um, drive fast, take chances. Get any of that? It's a good show.